Hey traders, Jason here from Love Brothers. So in this video, I wanna talk about using weekly charts or looking at weekly charts. Sometimes the daily charts look like a mess and they look, but they look crystal clear on a weekly chart. Or sometimes there's information on the weekly chart that is not on the daily chart. Sometimes I get the feeling that a lot of traders, they start with the daily, they zoom in with the hourly and they go beyond that to like the 15 minute chart and they're like looking really closely and the answer or the like the true picture is on the weekly chart they, they have a way of like smoothing out a lot of chaotic noise and the weeklies tend to be much more smoother and they kind of give you a much better and big you know a better picture of, of the big picture uh, even if you're a shorter term trader who gets entries off like the 30 minute chart or the hourly charts it's still a good habit to get into to look at the weekly charts because a lot of valuable information is there that is not elsewhere. All right, so I'm just going to go through a handful of examples here just to kind of show you, hey, here's the daily, here's the weekly, uh, check it out. So what I have here, I have two panes here. On the left is the daily, on the right is the weekly. So I'm going to just go through a handful of examples. So in this example, you see, you see AA, on uh, on the left side, you can see a lot of gaps, a lot of tails on the candles. I mean, when you look at something like this, it looks like a lot of uh, you know inconsistent movement, a lot of inconsistent movement here. Kind of you know hard to trade because it looks like. Uh, you know, if you look closely there, a lot of times you make a higher high and then it gets batted back. But then you look over at the weekly, and you see there's much smoother price action. You see a rolling kind of head and shoulder bottom pattern. It gets above the 21 over here, breaks out, and now it's getting rejected by the 50, which is perfectly fine. And you're thinking, hey, if we get a pullback to the 21 or down into this range between the 21 and the 50, then the stock will be set up for a potential you know, next leg. Okay, this setup here on the weekly is not really apparent on the daily. On the daily, it just looks like we got rolling action here, which okay. looks good, and we definitely have a breakout here. And this is a great move here. Uh, but again, like the day-to-day -day chaos of these gaps and these tails and some overlapping candles get really smoothed out on the weekly chart. And the weekly chart shows you that it's got a lot of, you know, pretty good upside potential if this breakout that took place right over here last week can hold. Okay. So what looks like chaos on the daily looks like smooth price action on the weekly. So that's why we want to look at the weekly. Let's look at another one. Here's Bizun or Bizun, however you want to pronounce it. Um, we've profiled this one at Lava Brothers several times over the last few months. We've had a breakout, breakout, uh, breakout, and you can see the stock has done really well, um, more than doubled. When you come over here to the uh, <clears throat> to the weekly chart, we see that some of the levels that the daily chart got rejected by were not random. Okay, so like right over here where the stock moved, you know, had one big up day there, easy to get excited about that. Uh, it actually on the weekly chart, it moved right over here to the day to the weekly 21. Then it came down and settled in above the eight. And then when it got above the 21 over here, it moved up to the 50 right over here. Okay, so this high over here is just above the 50. So what looks like a random level on the daily chart actually is, uh, you know, pretty well forecasted levels on on the weekly where we have a bottom here. It comes up to the up to the 21, does some backing and filling, comes up to the 50, gets above it for a day, and now it starts pulling back. So right now we're thinking like again, this is a stock that we post at Lever Brothers a few times. Uh, if we get a little bit of a pullback towards the 21, comes up here to the 50, pauses maybe a little bit, and then goes through. That's your setup. Okay, that kind of a setup doesn't isn't so obvious. You know, those levels aren't that obvious on the daily chart, but on the weekly chart, it actually plays out very smoothly, which is why you want to look at the weekly charts. Next one. Here's CSTM. So on the weekly chart. You got rejected by the 21 here, rejected by the 21, rejected by the 21 all through here. And then once it got above the 21, notice it went right up to the 50. Okay, so now we got the stock in between the 50 and the 21. Uh, and it, you know, if we do a little backing and filling here, it'll be ready to get through the 50 and make a run at a higher level. That setup isn't easily, you know, it's not that apparent on 
uh, on the daily chart. You definitely have a breakout here, but as far as like where to expect a pullback, it's just not as obvious. And the fact that the stock stopped right up here, it's not really obvious why it stopped there. But on the weekly chart, we can see that it stopped there. We also, um, you know, as far as like why did the stock take off here, one of them is because it actually broke out of this uh, this down sloping channel here. Another reason is because it actually got above the 21 over here on the weekly, okay? So the weekly chart often offers some information that is not available on the daily. Let's look at another one here. So here's floor and decor. The daily is a total mess. You can see like big move down, up, like, I mean, this is just as chaotic as you can possibly be. I mean, there's like no smooth motion, no smooth movement, just chaos, a lot of gaps, some overlapping candles, tails on the candles, uh, a lot of sudden reversals, completely untradeable uh, on, the, on, the, on the daily chart. But when you look at the weekly, we have it got rejected by the 50, rejected by the 50, rejected by the 50, okay? We have support down here at the lows, and then once it gets through the fifth, once it got through the 50 here, it got through the 21, that's through 50. Now, look, if we can get, if this stock can move sideways for a couple of weeks and settle in above the 50 day, not the 50 day, the 50 week moving average, um, that would bode well for an eventual continuation up. Okay, that setup is not apparent on the daily. The daily chart, in my opinion, is completely untradeable. Uh, it's just too chaotic. But the weekly chart actually moves fairly smoothly. It respects levels, it respects moving averages, and if we can get it, and if the stock can settle in here for a few weeks, I do think we get a breakout here and probably a run up to 100, maybe even higher, depending on how the overall market is acting. Next up, GDS this is another stock that we post at Levitt Brothers. So here's the daily. We had this bottoming pattern here, came up, then consolidated here, then you can see it broke out, and now it's actually pulling back fairly hard. So Definitely playable. It was a decent trade. Not always easy uh, because we have small candles. We have a lot of gaps in here. So not the smoothest mover. But on the on the weekly, we have rejected by the 21, 21, 21. Then once it gets over here, you can see it's above the eight, finding you know getting getting support at the eight, straddling the 21. And then once it moves up, it moves up right to the 50, gets rejected, comes back down to the 21. Um, it, it tests the 50 again at some point in time last week, and now it's falling again. So as long as we have the 21 is here and the 50 is here, uh, you know, this setup is not really apparent on the daily chart, but on the weekly chart here, as long as the stock can like settle in here between the 21 and the 50, it'll be nicely set up in position to eventually break out and run again. Okay, volume down here uh, supports it. So we know there's a trend here. The stock's done really well. It's more than doubled, but with all the gaps and everything, it doesn't look easy to trade, but on the weekly time frame, it actually looks doable. So this is why we want to look at the week weekly charts. So here is HIMAX. Um, did well, moved up. You can see, uh, you know, moved up, consolidated here, but instead of breaking out, it actually broke down. So we have a, a, a lower ho low there, but then it rallied up to a higher high here. So it's actually starting to, you know, we have a little bit more of a broadening pattern here where it's like higher, you know, lower low, higher high. But then we come over here to the weekly and it looks like the stock has got a really nice, smooth, moving, like head and shoulder bottom pattern. And we got we're starting to get some support here from the 21 right here. We have the 50 day moving or 50 week moving average up here. We also have resistance right here. So the stock actually what, what looks kind of chaotic here and because we have a lower low here and a higher high here, we're not actually sure what's what's going on. But on the weekly chart, it looks really good. Okay, we got rejected by the 21 here, but now we're above the 21. We have the um, the 50 rejected the stock over here, but now the 50 is over here. It looks like the stock could settle in here and break out through resistance and through the 50 and, uh, you know, and, and rally up a couple points. Okay, that setup is not really obvious on the daily, but it is pretty, pretty clearly laid out on the weekly. Let's look at another one. Um, here's Huya. Okay, another one where the you know, the, the trade isn't that obvious on the daily chart. Obviously, it's done really, really well. A lot of Chinese stocks have. Okay, but right now, the, the trade isn't that obvious. It looks like it's too far gone, and it, and, it, and it probably is. But you look at the weekly, we have rejected by the 21, 
So resistant by the 21. Now notice here, once it gets through the 21, it goes up to the 50, comes down to the 21. Then it has this week where it touches the 21 and the 50. Okay, then it breaks out through the 50 and runs. Okay, so this is a really nice sequence for it to get through the 21 over here, move in between the 21 and the 50, then break out to the 50. So now, if this stock can move sideways, maybe a little bit down, and the 21 can come up here and scoop it up, that's going to be our trade. That's going to be our next trade. Okay, that's not obvious looking at the daily, but at the, the but the weekly kind of lays it out a little bit more clearly for us. Let's look at a few more here. So here's Intel. Doesn't look anything special here. Just a stock that's rolling up and down uh, in a range, which is perfect, which is tradable. Some some people love trading it, trading in a range, but you look at the weekly and it has even better potential. Okay, the daily doesn't seem to have a whole lot of potential. It looks like you're, you know, you're buying low at 26 and you're selling up here at 30 and you're just trying to make 10%, 10%, 10%. The weekly actually looks a little bit like it has more potential. Um, you have a resistance level here at the at the other at the high. You have a, obviously a rolling double bottom pattern. You have the stock trying to find support at the eight. We get little resistance from the 21. So the combination of the previous high here with the 21 there is resistance, okay? But if we can get through there, if we can get up into here, then we're probably gonna rally up to the downsloping 50, okay? So that trade is not apparent on the daily chart, but on the weekly chart, it's actually laid out fairly nicely. The stock actually has pretty good potential, and what looks a little bit chaotic over here because there's a lot of gaps, and you know, I mean, this was a big down day, and then the stock gapped up, and then this was a big down day, but then the stock gapped up. That type of stuff all kind of gets smoothed out when you look at the weekly chart. Here's KC, another Chinese name that has done very well. This was on our trading list at Levitt Brothers. You can see it traded up, got squeezed by converging trend lines, broke out and ran up. Not apparent yet what's going to happen next. But you go over to the weekly chart and it actually shows uh, greater potential. Okay, This is a big move and you might think like that's too far, it's gone too much, how much more could it go? You look at the weekly chart and it's like it's only just now in the last three weeks that the stock was able to get above uh, the 50 over here got above the 21. Now it's in the last three weeks, it got above the 50. It has spent two consecutive weeks. We're in, we're in week three now uh, consolidating here. And if it can continue con to consolidate here above the 50, and you can see the 50 is starting to flatten out here, this could actually be a really good trade uh, on the right side here. Okay, It's not apparent over here on the daily chart, but the weekly chart says, hey, this, st this, start this stock has based for... Uh, quite a long time and it's just now coming up the right side and if we could break out here uh, get support here and break get support from the from the weekly 50 and then break out there's a, a lot of upside potential that isn't obvious uh, on the on the daily time frame so look at a couple more so here's lucid uh, so this looks you know horrible horrible stock um, puts in a little bit of a bottom here, rallies up, really strong volume here. Now it's consolidating. So this stock looks like a, a stock that, you know, run up a bunch, at least not a bunch, but it run up like percentage wise, run up a bunch. And we can play a breakout here. That That's definitely tradable. Um, but let's keep in mind, let's go over to the weekly chart. And we see resistance here at the 21 and we see basically a horrible downtrend. Okay. There's nothing really attractive about this stock. The stock's not even above its eight yet. Um, so it's definitely tradable on the daily, but let's keep in mind that like the most you could possibly expect is maybe just fill this void space over here up to the 21. Uh, but until until something changes, until we get above the 21 and back test it, any any move in this stock uh, needs to be considered just a short term trade. So the daily you you have this you know you get visions of like hey this stock just moved off the off the bottom many consecutive up days. We got huge volume. The stock could actually, you know, run up a bunch. The weekly tells us you might want to be careful because we have some resistance levels overhead and the stock overall still not doing very well. Uh, let's look at one more. Um, here is um, TSM. So on the on the daily time frame, you can see, you know, big move down, move up, consolidate here, but instead of breaking out, it dropped again and then it moved up here. A lot of gaps. Some overlapping candles definitely doesn't move too smoothly, but then you look at the uh, the weekly time frame and it actually looks really good. You got you know like a hump here, a bigger hump here, a smaller hump here. Looks like we broke out, got through trendline resistance. We got support here from the 21, 
Then we got through trend line resistance. Now we're moving through the 50. So if this, you know, whether this thing pulls back here, gets one more touch of the 21 and goes, or whether we just move sideways here above the 50, which is starting to flatten out a little bit. Either way, what looks kind of, I don't want to say untradeable, but what looks not overly attractive on the daily chart actually looks like the beginning it looks like the stock just broke out of a, of a long base and we might just be in the beginning uh, stages of a move. Okay. So my point in showing you this is that look at the weekly charts. Okay. The weekly charts will smooth things out and they'll reveal information that is not available in the daily charts. Anytime somebody is struggling, the first thing I say is go back up and look at the weekly charts because you're zoomed in so close. You're not even seeing the big picture. You're buying a stock when it's, when it's running up against a long-term moving average back up, look at the weekly charts. They smooth things out and they make things much more clear. All right. Hope you got something out of this. We'll see you next time.